Hello and welcome to this free songwriting lesson, courtesy of ultimatesongwritinglessons.com. In this video we're going to be exploring the Beatles' 1964 hit, Can't Buy Me Love. We'll be taking a look at how Paul McCartney would have chosen the chords, the mechanics behind the song, and how you can apply the same techniques in your own music. Firstly, let's look at the chords used in the song and break down each section into its component parts. In the verse we have the chords C, F, C again, G, F, and finally another C. In the chorus, we have E minor, A minor, C, E minor, A minor, D minor, and G. This song is in the key of C major, which contains the following notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. If we then add to these notes by creating what we call the harmonized major scale, which in simple terms is basically developing each note into a certain chord, this gives us the following chords. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. So we now have a list of chords all belonging to the key of C major. Incidentally, this applies to any major key. Once you have written out your major scale, the sequence of chords always goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So you can apply the same concept to whichever key you're working in to provide your palette of chords. Incidentally, you might want to watch that last part again or write it down for future use. Once this is in place, we can go ahead and number each chord 1 through 7. Now let's look again at the chords used in the verse of Can't Buy Me Love. We have the following. C, F, C again, G, F, and once more back to C. When we look back at our harmonized major scale, we see they've exclusively used the 1, 4, and 5 chords, or C, F, and G. These are regarded as the strongest chord changes in Western music because of the way they resolve back to the 1 chord. You may have heard them referred to as a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth. This is a reflection of their relationship with the one chord, or it's also known as the root chord. There are literally millions of songs that use the 1-4-5 progression. Listen to any Chuck Berry or early rock and roll recordings and you'll hear it time and time again. Probably the most famous example is that of the 12-bar blues, which uses the 1-4-5 chords to maximum effect. If you're looking at creating a strong or hooky verse or chorus, experiment with including these chords and you'll quickly see their value. Let's move on to the chorus. Here we have the chords E minor, A minor, C, E minor, A minor, D minor, and finally G. Although notice we do have the C major and the G major, or the 1 and 5 chords appear once each, notice how most of this section is dominated by the 2, the 3, and the 6 chords, in this case D minor, E minor, and A minor. These are actually considered to be weaker changes, not because they don't sound as good, merely because they don't resolve back to the root chord as well as the 4 or 5 do. This is where the beauty of this type of song comes into play. It's the delicate balancing act between the strong and the weak changes that makes the song interesting and not too predictable. Lastly, notice the final chord of the chorus is a G, our 5 chord, and the first chord of the verse is a C, our root, or our 1 chord. This specific chord change is regarded as the strongest chord change of them all, moving from 5 to 1. Notice how the song's chorus reaches a high point or climax when it lands on the G, effectively catapulting it into the next verse. This is a great tool to use at the end of a section, whether it's a verse, bridge, chorus, or a solo. To summarize, here are some key points to remember. Number one, the harmonized major scale provides you with all the chords that belong to the key you're working in. You should experiment with these to create chord progressions for use in your songs. Number two, the one, four, and five chords are the strongest changes. Number three, try using a mixture of strong changes in your verse with weaker changes in your chorus, or as is more common, try it the other way round with the chorus using the stronger chords. This helps to create interest so the song doesn't sound too predictable. Number four, experiment with ending your verse or your chorus on the five chord, moving to the root chord, or the one chord, at the beginning of your next section to create a climactic effect. Okay, that's all for this lesson. Feel free to go back and watch this video several times over. I recommend you take some notes too and have them to hand next time you sit down to write a song. Be sure to come back next time for another free songwriting lesson courtesy of ultimatesongwritinglessons.com. You can find out more including how to create great melodies, write better lyrics, how to smash through writer's block and massively improve your songwriting skills guaranteed at www.ultimatesongwritinglessons.com.